What's up, everyone? I hope everyone's staying safe in quarantine during Nurgle's all-out assault on our society. With everyone stuck at home, I've been seeing a lot of posts about people starting new armies to paint while they wait for all the world's diseases to turn the land outside into a blasted hellscape, so I figured it would be a good chance to go over my picks for the top five best armies for new players just getting into Warhammer 40k. What's up folks, welcome back to Tactical Tortoise and today I'm going to be covering the best armies to get into 40k with. For this list I'm going to be looking for some very particular criteria. First off, ease of play. Obviously if you're just getting into the game you don't want to learn a faction with really complex mechanics and strategies that you have to get down pat to win. A low bottle count, clearly 40k is an expensive game so let's face it. If you're new, you probably want a smaller army that's less expensive and easier to paint. Power level, well, 40k is in a place where every army can win, especially at the local and RTT level, where most people will probably be starting off. Less powerful armies sure don't hold your hand while you're doing it, so we'll be focusing on armies on the upper end of the power curve. And lastly, a lack of list diversity. This one sounds a little weird, but 40k's list creation is insanely complex. So speaking of someone who's still relatively relatively new to the game, armies with a huge breadth of options and successful list archetypes can be very overwhelming, confusing, and expensive if you're jumping between different lists. Armies with a small pool of successful builds are a lot easier to get started in the game with. I should also note that I'll be coming at this from a competitive standpoint, and at the time of recording it's April 2020, and while everything's mostly stagnated right now, we do still have a few Psychic Awakening expansions on the horizon and new releases that could shake up the list. Number five on our list is the Green Tide of the Orcs. <laughs> This one is a little weird because it sure isn't a low model count or inexpensive army, but being orcs, its bigger models are a lot easier to kit bash and convert to get around that drawback. The big benefits of starting with orcs is that they have a very straightforward game plan and some solid units to back it up. They usually pound the enemy to little giblets with insane guns like smashes and shock attack guns, then secure board control and win on objectives by flooding the battlefields with little green infantry. Unfortunately, orcs are last on the list because of the aforementioned high expense and model count, and the fact that they struggle to move out of the mid-tier of power level. So, you can run into some players who are experts at beating the normal orc game plan and can give you a hard time. Number four on the list are the noble demon hunters of the Grey Knights. Stormbolt is ready. The Sons of Titan are relative newcomers to the top tier of competitive play with their updates in Ritual of the Damned, but their new abilities are enough to score them a place on the list. With a lot of relatively old kits in their range, a small selection of models to choose from, and the ability to play extremely small lists, getting into Grey Knights is easier than it's ever been. The biggest downside of the faction is that their newfound power level comes at the cost of extreme complexity. Grey Knight psychic phases are usually an insane convoluted mess of precise sequencing and positioning. If you've ever played any other miniature games that rely on activation order, like War Machine and Hordes, or you really like combo decks in Magic the Gathering, you'll probably catch on pretty quickly. But I am more than 20 games in with my Grey Knight list, and I still haven't unlocked the optimal combination of Warp Tides. The other downside of the faction is that its low model count can make it unforgiving. Making a mistake in losing a Paladin squad too early can spell defeat right off the bat, but on the flip side, they play so differently from any other 40k army that you can sometimes steal wins from opponents who aren't practiced at stopping all their tricks. I'm probably going to cover the tactics I've learned from playing Grey Knights so far in a future video, so stay tuned for that if you decide to pick up the faction. We all knew that they were going to make the list at some point, so number three are the LOUSY SPACE MARINES OR THE EMPEROR! Marines are in an excellent place in the meta right now, even after their recent nerfs. They're still around the top of the competitive power curve, and with more releases on the way, there's a lot of diversity to pick from. Marines also benefit from having a relatively low model count, especially for their lists that gravitate towards heavy vehicles, so painting up an army is fairly easy, with the one downside that their newer kits can be a little expensive to pick up new in box. Fortunately, that can be offset with Marine's robust second-hand market, and you can often find the units you want on eBay or trade sites for a solid discount. 
with a plethora of different chapters, list archetypes, and literally dozens of competitively viable profiles, Marine's signature tactical flexibility can be adapted to suit any playstyle you like. Unfortunately, that extreme flexibility is also their biggest drawback. The huge breadth of list archetypes and units makes it hard to build viable lists right off the bat, so if you're thinking of getting started in the faction, starting with a net list is almost required. When I started playing the faction after their new book last year, when Marines were at the peak of their brokenness, I homebrewed a list that I thought would be good and ended up losing like 10 games in a row because of my unoptimized unit choices. I actually ended up going back to my crappy Tyranids for tournament play because I was so frustrated with the Marines faction. Fortunately, that depth and complexity unlocks some extreme levels of power and a wide faction that you can tailor to your playstyle in the future with new additions. Just keep in mind that different chapter lists often look very different from one another, and switching between chapters can often be like buying a whole new army. For example, an army that's good for Iron Hands looks very different from what's a good choice for White Scars. Coming in second place on the list are the Space Fish Communists of the Tau Empire. We're going to need heavy weapons. 40K's resident collection of anime tropes build highly consistent defensive lists with a hyper straightforward game plan. Take the center of the board by shrugging off damage with drones and obliterate their opponent with insane firepower. While well, the Greater Good expansion brought the faction a few new list archetypes to play with, especially if you want to play aggressive, character-focused lists, their relatively limited pool of competitive options makes list building and swapping between the archetypes much easier for the Empire than a faction like Space Marines. And while there is some positioning and target priority to learn, getting proficient with Tau is fairly straightforward as well. Fortunately, that straightforward game plan is also solid, so competitively, Tau find themselves on the upper end of the power curve, even putting up some super major wins back in 2019. Unfortunately, that straightforward game plan means that you'll be neglecting several phases of the game, since the whole faction basically only deals damage in the shooting phase, so if you're looking for a more interesting and dynamic experience, the Firecast might not be the place for you. Still, if you're a fan of stompy gun robots and are cool with painting 50 identical shield drones, the Tau Empire is also always looking for new recruits. So we're almost at the end, but before we get to my top pick of faction for new players, let's talk about some honorable mentions. Necrons are similar to Tau with an extremely straightforward game plan of shooting your opponent with green laser beams until nothing is left, and back that up with a small suite of competitive lists that basically only rely exclusively on 6 to 9 vehicles and elite units like destroyers, so model count isn't an issue either. What is an issue is that unlike Tau, their straightforward game plan isn't backed up by 50 flying frisbees that make their expensive vehicles functionally immune to damage. So they tend to be difficult to play effectively and on the low end of the power curve. Adeptus Mechanicus are also in here as an honorable mention for much the same reason. While they can compete in the fight phase with units like Dragoons and Fulgrite Electro Priests, Mechanicus are very much a pure gun Line with some of the most extreme damage outputs in the entire game. Unfortunately, a significant lack of the fly keyword and relatively mediocre artillery means that Admech can be very swingy, being engaged without the support of their melee troops or fighting an enemy that refuses to show its face to their withering gun line can be problematic for the Robo Boys. The last honorable mention is one that everyone loves to bring up when the issue of new players comes up, and that is Adeptus Custodes. Fortunately for the Guardians of the Emperor, they bring an extremely low model count to the table, sporting some of the hardest infantry in the game to kill, making it seem like the perfect choice for a player getting into the game on a budget. Unfortunately, the Guardians of the Emperor bring an extremely low model count to the table, and infantry isn't ever actually that hard to kill, making Custodes one of the most difficult armies in the game to play effectively. While they make excellent additions to combined Imperium lists, also known as soup lists, pure Custodes is difficult to play and usually not very powerful, and often relies on expensive Forge World vehicles to shore up the faction's weaknesses. So with those honorable mentions covered, we're almost at the end of the list. So let's move on to my top pick for 40k factions for a new player just getting in to the competitive side of the game. And that is... Eldos! Yeah! I hate Eldos! 
40K's resident space elves are on the list for a lot of the same reasons that space marines are. While they typically don't bring a high model count to the table and rely on a lot of older kits that are not hyper expensive or are easy to kit bash, Eldar do sport a deep selection of competitively viable unit choices. Fortunately for new players, this flexibility isn't taken to the same mind-numbingly complex extreme that it is for Marines, and while Eldar sport several different effective list archetypes, they're fewer in number, more straightforward, and include a lot more model overlap between the lists than Marines do. Most Eldar lists fall into one of two camps, either a decently strong gun line using night spinners, fire prisms, and support weapons platforms to abuse the master crafter's trait and shoot people to death, or a fast, assault-focused list based around jet bikes such as Skyrunner Warlock Conclaves or Shining Spears. Both of these types of lists offer different and interesting experiences, and both are very competitively powerful, with Craftworld Eldar in contention for the strongest faction in the game. The one downside of Eldar is their relative fragility, especially when their units are compared with analogs across other factions. However, they bring strong competition in all phases of the game and other advantages like a plethora of the fly keyword across the whole faction to ensure that they aren't easily pinned into a single strategy. Overall, the Fraction brings a decent amount of flexibility alongside a moderate model count, dynamic and interesting playstyles that take advantage of and teach new players how to operate in all phases of the game, and are highly competitive. Honestly, the biggest downside is that they're hampered by a reliance on old kits with some mediocre model sculpts, but with some proxies and kit bashing, you can end up with a pretty good looking Craft World Eldar army nonetheless. Watch out! They're full of tricks! So those are my picks for the top five factions for new players, alongside some honorable mentions. Obviously, these are based on my own opinions, not hard facts, so you might have a different idea of where players should start when looking to jump into competitive 40k, and I'd love to hear that. If you disagree with any of my picks, or you like this style of video and would like to see more, drop a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out Tactical Tours on Patreon for exclusive videos and early access to public videos. And keep it classy, folks. Happy working.